Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Kimberly Miller and Shelly Groves. Look at that, music. Shelly, do you listen to the podcast? You know the music, right? You know what, I've listened a couple of times, guys. Just a couple of times, that's it? I know, Dwight makes fun of me all the time. All right, okay, hey, well, first of all, thank you for so much for taking the time out of your day. You can see uh, Kim, and I actually asked Kim if I could call her Kim at the beginning, so I don't wanna get in trouble because she has Kimberly on there, but I asked her if Kim is okay. She said yes, she approved. And then uh, Shelly, and they're both actually at the end of a long day, they're taking their time to do a, a podcast with me. So thank you so much uh, for doing this. And you're you're both, is it just right outside of Columbus, Ohio? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and you, okay, and I wrote this down because it was very important that I got it right, that you work at a career technical plant, career technical planning district. Is that correct? Did I say it right? The, the district is called a career technical planning district but we're known as Eastland Fairfield Career and Technical Schools. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to get into what that is, what you do, and why it's so crucial to not just basically people in that area, but for all of education, just the conversation we're having before. And just from my know of your work, I have a very uh, mu good mutual friend, Dwight Carter, and I'm going to give Dwight a little <laughs> shout out before we even start. But uh, we're going to, I'm going to ask you, we're going to do the three questions podcast first. And, uh, Shelly, I'm going to ask you this first. We know we were talking about, uh, you, you all work with some really great teachers, but when you think of your career and you think of like a teacher in your past that may have inspired you, who is someone that you think about and, and what, do, and why? Well, I actually have two. I, I, I was thinking about this last week. My first would be my high school geometry teacher. He was the football coach. And man, there's a lot of geometry in football. Let me just say that right there now. Is. Uh, there is. It was wonderful. It was very applicable. And, and I think after every game, we dissected every play in geometrical terms. He put it up there. He was just, he brought it to life for me. Um, the second teacher would actually be my dad, who is not officially oh. a teacher, um, but uh, he's the one I was in middle school struggling with total surface area and i didn't understand what in the world i'm what am i looking at how do you do this um he actually went and got a roll of toilet paper and brought it out and walked through <laughs> shelly this is what you're trying to find the tops the sides the the inside the roll and he took it all apart and i thought oh my goodness um so i think he's he he was the first one that my geometry teacher just kind of drove it home for me well, then we're going to give a big, we're going to give a big shout out by them too. And actually, he, one of my favorite things, misconceptions about, um, about football players is that they're actually dumb. That's actually like, a, oh. you know, and like football is one of the most complex sports the amount of stuff that you actually have to know. Speaking about football, I got to ask you this because you're in Columbus, Columbus, right? Don't go there. Oh, Do not go there. Oh, oh, don't, don't. Hey, by the time this is posted, no one's going to be talking about how Michigan beat Ohio State, by the way. Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Go, right. I was actually going to ask you that, but Shelly, I could kind of read it when you said that. I was going to ask you, are you Bengals fans or Browns fans or neither? Neither. Neither. Ohio State, right? That's like, that's, that's your pro team right there. Okay. All right. I got you. Okay. It is a little soon. Hey, but like what? What? Okay, now I got to ask you this. When was the last time Michigan actually beat Ohio State? Because it's been Jim Harbaugh nine never years. beat Michigan or Ohio State once, right? Like nine years ago, I think. Even nine years. Yeah. Big right. nine. All right. Maybe we should just do a whole podcast and talk about the game. Maybe we'll do that after this. Okay. So, okay, let's let's uh, let's move on from uh, the football stuff. So, Kim, when you think about administrators, and currently you are a superintendent, and Shelly told me. She's the assistant to the superintendent. She is the dry, Dwight Schrute of uh, no. yeah, I know. I know she's assistant superintendent, but you know, in and out of those roles. So when you think about administrators, who's like someone, whether they're when you're a student, you know, whether they're a colleague, who's someone that really inspired you and why? Wow, that's a that's a tough question because when I go back from my student days um, into all the different districts I've worked in, I've I've had the benefit of working with a lot of, a lot of really wonderful administrators. Um, but if I'm honest, you also sometimes learn from the people things you don't want to do right. as a leader. Um, but as I think about this, um, when I became an assistant principal and my background is secondary education, I taught English um, at, at the secondary level. Um, but I um, 
became an assistant principal in an elementary school. So I, I was really very much a fish out of water in elementary school. But I worked for um, a, the principal who had been there a number of years um, to the point that she'd been able to hire, I think, everybody who worked in the building. Wow. And she really focused on developing people, developing teachers, meeting people where they were, meeting adults where they were and developing them. And um, when I left to become a principal from that, that position, um, I just felt that I had, I used to say to people, I hit the jackpot and I'm gonna say her name and getting to work with Linda French. Um, she developed a number of assistant principals to become principals. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of us have since become superintendents. But she really just, not just the work she did with me, but the work that, that she did with teachers, um, she was just super patient with people and could meet adults as well as students. But, you know, when you're an administrator, you're really developing right. the adults. So um, okay. I would say she's one of the people that inspired me. Um, I always thought if I, if I could be as good as Linda, right. that would be great. Linda French, big shout out. Love it. Uh, that actually, that's a huge thing uh, in the school that I was in uh, when I think my career, really my career turned around, uh, my principal at the time was very similar. And uh, if you wanted to go in men and you put in the effort, she would develop that in you. If you wanted to be the best teacher and be there for 30 years, she would develop that in you. Mm -hmm. And I think that was, that was something that was, I, I noticed, mm -hmm. I actually, I'll never forget this conversation. Um, she had a lot of people on her staff who left, like would be, I was actually one of them. I was there for a year and then I went to assistant principal and I was like, the year I entered that school, I was going to quit teaching. And then a year later I went into admin and she was there. And I remember I was actually a principal at the time. She was associate superintendent. So she was like Shelly at the time. Right. And, um, and some people were making fun of her, uh, because so many of her staff left quickly from her school. And the reason they left quickly is because they went on to admin. They went mm -hmm. on to central right. office. And she yeah. developed these people. And she said, I'll never get, she just totally put everyone in their place. She said, look, I would rather have someone awesome for two years than someone terrible for 10. Yep. Right. And I just, I'll never forget that. And she, she, she was also, and like, she, she also would, you know, sometimes people wouldn't be there because they, they weren't the right fit. They didn't work out for the school and right. she was able to make those tough decisions as well. And just the people like that. And it's the same thing as you, Kim. I, if I could have like one tenth of the impact on my career that she had, it's just absolutely incredible. Yeah. And so I, the other thing I was going to say about Linda is I told you I was a secondary teacher and she took a chance on me to move into elementary school. And I think one of the things we do sometimes, especially in education, is we pigeonhole people. Well, you're a secondary person, you're an elementary person, you're a, you know, you're a, a middle school person. And we sometimes don't allow people to move into new areas where they would learn and grow right. because we get so co co caught up in what they did in the past. And that was the other thing I think that I appreciated about her was my mm -hmm. um, at that point, I had 12 years of secondary teaching experience and um, three years working in a consulting role. And um, there were a number of people in the building, teachers who said, well, she's all secondary. She's not going to understand elementary. Right. And I had a lot to learn, but I really do credit having the opportunity to work at an elementary school with my ability to eventually become yeah. um, an assistant superintendent, a chief academic officer and a superintendent. So I think that's that other great lesson is you have to be willing to let people learn in a new realm and not put them into a box and say, that's what they do. I understand. I actually, I trained to become a kindergarten teacher, got a high school position out of it, did that for a year, had trouble getting an elementary position, finally got that, did that for a couple of years, then went to high school and then they were like reluctant. And then it was very hard to get back in elementary, right? Because mm -hmm. people were like, even I'm like, no, I like, I just actually like kids a different, you know, you're, I'm, I was very funny to elementary kids, right? <laughs> it's a little bit easier. High school, not as funny, right? You can use the same jokes. All They're right. a tougher crowd. Right, a little bit tougher crowd, right? Yeah, we are. So, so it, yeah, it is kind of fun. All right, so last question. Uh, when you think about, uh, and we'll start with you, Shelly. Uh, when you think about your um, career and you look back at when you started and all the stuff that you know now, what advice would you give to your first year teacher self? Oh, hmm. I guess I would say, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> hold on for dear life? Is that what you're doing? Hold on. Um, yeah. I always knew I wanted to be a teacher. Um, 
And when I, I remember standing in front of my math classroom thinking, oh my goodness, I am living the life. I'm teaching quadratics to high school students. This is amazing. Um, never thought I wanted to, to go into administration right. and just how, how a plan has unfolded. Um, it, it's pretty exciting. So I would I, just hold on, Shelly. It's going to be a great, it's going to be great. Love it. Kim, how about you? Um, so unlike Shelly, I had never planned to be an educator. When I went to college, I wanted to go to law school. So I, I thought I was going to be a lawyer. Um, so I, I came to education in a roundabout way through, through my college experience. But um, I, I think what I would tell not only myself, but maybe all first year teachers is give yourself some grace because your students will. You don't have to be perfect. They really are very willing. If you're upfront and honest with them, um, students will, they'll, they'll be your biggest cheerleader. I think when students, when you're authentic with students and when you say, Hey, I messed up, I made a mistake. Um, they're, they're generally like right there saying it's okay. It's okay. You know, I, I wasn't, wasn't married back then. So my first year students, you know, like it was miss peach, miss peach. It'll be okay. Right. You know, but it took me, um, a, a few years to get to that place where I didn't put so much pressure on myself to do everything perfectly. Um, and then that, that stress doesn't make you the communicator and the relationship builder that you really want to be anyway. So um, just give yourself some grace and, and give your students the opportunity to give you grace because they will. I, I think I think really one of the things that you said that's key there is that the students will give you grace if they if they can see you're authentic. Yes. Right. But if if you're not. And yeah. it's, it could be a different story, right? And I think that that is like, and that that is, you know, something that I think a lot of people, you know, like a lot of people that I work with, you know, go into speaking, um, and they'll they'll project something that they're not on stage. And I'm like, just just be yourself, right? Don't try to be someone else. Don't try to do this because people can read through that really quickly. And I think it's and it's way more true with kids, right? Kids are. And kids will call you out on it too, right? They're on yes. right? Like every zit I've ever had when I taught, I knew about about two minutes into the school day, right? Because they made sure that they they knew that I they knew, right? Oh, yeah. So so I, I love it. Anyways, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I'm pumped uh, to have you on and talk more about um, your school your school district. Uh, maybe hear a little bit about Dwight. Maybe we're gonna do like a little Dwight rumor session so I can hear about my friend Dwight and see what's going on behind the scenes. No, he's amazing amazing guy but i'm so pumped uh just to hang out with you and i'm so glad people got to listen to you uh, everyone thank you so much for listening uh, to three questions camera just went out all right thanks everybody